First, we have a lever, which emits a consistent source of power which can be either switched on or off. We then have a button made out of wood, which will emit a short redstone signal when pressed. However, it can also be activated by being shot at with a bow and arrow. We then have the stone button, which will emit a short redstone signal when pressed. However, it will not be activated by bow and arrow. We then have the wooden pressure plate, which will emit a redstone signal for as long as something is stepping on it. Players, mobs, and items. It can also be triggered by using a bow and arrow. We then have the stone pressure plate, which can only be activated by a player or a mob, such as a zombie for example. We then have the weighted pressure plate, heavy, which requires a substantial amount of weight to send on a redstone power. More information and exact numbers are in the description. We then have the weighted pressure plate, light, which is easier to power but still requires a substantial amount of weight to send on a redstone signal. We then have a redstone torch, which is used a lot in redstone circuits. This emits a constant redstone source unless turned off, which we'll demonstrate it later on in this video. Last but not least we have tripwire, which requires two tripwire hooks and string in between. When a mob or player steps on the tripwire, a redstone signal will be emitted. It can also be triggered by items or a bow and arrow. Here's a quick showcase of pretty much every item that will react to redstone. As seen here, a redstone signal cannot travel longer than 15 blocks. However, like seen here, you can use a redstone repeater to kind of refresh the redstone signal, allowing it to travel yet another 15 blocks. And as seen here, you can also use redstone torches to prolong the redstone signal. However, this is a bad example and it's hard to follow how the redstone torches work. So I'm gonna go more in depth on that right now. Okay, so the easiest way for me to explain the redstone torches for me is by actually recording in game. So you can see here we have a redstone signal going into this and this types off. Now, I'm gonna show you some signs. 1 equals on and 0 equals off. They can never be 1 1 or 0 0. Only 0 1 and 1 0. So here we have a simple 1 and 0. 1 which is this, represents on, and this becomes 0 because it's off. Now if we flip this, this becomes 0 1. Same here, here we have 1 0 1. 1 because it's on, he gets power, turns off, 0, no power, 1. We can also flip this switch and this becomes 0, 1, 0. Here we have 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Again, if you flip this, poof, 1, 0, 1. And this can go on forever, so here we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Again, if you flip this, it becomes the other way around. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now, to demonstrate this, here we have redstone signal and a torch. It places in its lid, like usual, this is as if you place it on the ground. However, if you give it like uh, a source of power and place it like there, as you can see, it turns on for a second, then realizes, oh, hey, shit, we have power going on, we better turn off. So there we go. And you can create this any way you want, like this. As long as they connect to a block and go to a side like so. It can be as long as possible, but remember redstone only travels 15 blocks. No further. Well, not no further, you go shorter, but no further. Like so. So here we have a signal going 101010. Now uh, if we connect it like that, we can probably fuck up some things. Yeah, now we created a circle or repeater which will 
a clock, basically, which we'll discuss the other day. That was intentional. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to fuck with your mind. But anyways, I hope that explains Redstone Torch a bit more for you.